Hello again and welcome to another edition of Suds and Country. Hi, I'm Herb Suds and welcome to the show. I'm very happy to have Nashville singer, songwriter, and guitar player. 4,000, how many, Gary? 400, I mean, 4,953rd hardest working man in show business. All right. I think. That's who we have here today as a guest on Suds and Country. You're a talented songwriter. Where did you, uh, singer and guitar player, what are you best known for? right now probably uh for playing lead guitar in the box tops back in the 60s okay the uh we had the letter and cry like a baby and they were they were pop hits okay that's probably the most but, notorious thing i've ever done okay and you also taught a lot of people how to play guitar and a lot of nashville entertainers right that i would be familiar with and which the country music audience would be familiar with such mm -hmm. as um, Pam Tillis and Cherie Austin, uh, a guy named Blake Weldon that had okay. a, uh, Brian and Blake, and a whole lot of people, actually. A lot of songwriters, and, um... Now, what's the purpose of teaching a songwriter how to play a guitar? Well, it's not that they don't know how to play at all. It, right. It's usually that they're, they're limited in what they can play, and I just teach them how to play more things. Okay, such as? Can they write a better song after they take your... After you teach them to play, I think so. Can. They have more options musically, so uh, like if they know three or four chords, I'll teach them a lot more chords and chord uh, progressions and rhythm patterns and finger picking and all that kind of stuff. Okay, can you show us on the guitar what you're talking about? Finger picking, rhythm pr progressions, and all what you just said. Sure. Let me hold your mic and show us now. Explain to us as we go. Okay. Now, for instance, <coughs> this right here is a. Travis picking pattern, what most people call it that anyway, and it's a... Uh, Merle Travis picking? Yeah, from Merle Travis. Uh, he didn't do it exactly that way, but whatever Chet Atkins does and a lot of players, it, it's the same general uh, finger picking style. And then I'll teach people how to play strumming. And this thing right here that everybody knows, but... Where, where's that sound so familiar from? Everything. Everything. Rock and roll, Chuck Berry. There you go. I mean, it's um, it's just a very popular little rhythm thing. Now, why can't people pick this up on their own? Is it a difficult what you're teaching them, or is it just they'd sooner come to you and say, Gary, you're the expert, teach us? Well, some people do pick it up on their own, but whatever they pick on their pick up on their own, there there's usually gaps in, in their okay. knowledge, you know, because they don't learn it in a systematic way like a keyboard player usually does. Okay. Now, where'd you learn how to do all this? Uh, my daddy showed me. <laughs> uh, well, he showed me how to play You Are My Sunshine. Go, can you pick it? You pick it. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. He did it, he did it faster. It's kind of early. Okay. You make me happy. Okay. When the skies are gray. And so I just learned how to... Okay play the chords and and how to change chords on certain words is how I began to learn okay. and um, so at the end of I don't know 30 minutes I could play you are my sunshine and and uh, I thought that was a better way to to learn than, than going and studying how to read music which I had tried to do before do you read music that's a good question do you... I, I do but I don't I, I wouldn't call myself a good sight reader where you because I'm not used to doing it nobody does it in Nashville so that, so how do uh, they how do they play they don't they just you do um, they do number charts for instance huh. uh, okay this song right here would be like this would be the intro to a song okay. and it would be like a G chord to a C chord to a D chord something like that. Uh, in the number system, you would say it's in the key of G, and it goes, a G is a one chord, and a C is the four chord, D is the five chord, so you just, if you wanted to learn a song, you'd just yell out to the other players, 4511, they write 4511, there, you know, and then a one, two minor, split five, you just, and then you just write it down, and then you play the song. No kidding. Now, do you play anything yeah. other than guitar? Do you have any other, do you play other string instruments? I can play, uh, not well, well, but I, I mean, I play bass and, and uh, dobro some. Do you play electric as, as, a, as opposed to acoustic, which we're listening right now? Both. Okay. When I and play you have with the, the same talent on both? 
Uh, You're equally talented oh, on sure. electric? Okay. Okay. I, it's about even because okay. I play both a lot. Yeah, I'm, I'm not musically inclined, so that's why mm -hmm. I'm saying, is it easier to play acoustic as opposed to uh, electric? Not really. Uh, it's physically harder to play an acoustic. Okay. Uh, because electric guitars have smaller necks usually and the, the strings are lighter and you don't have to physically press as hard. Now, these courses that you go around the country teaching, you teach on acoustic mostly? Right, because I couldn't expect everybody to bring amplifiers and things. No, that's true, too. And everybody brings their own guitar. Sure, if they okay. got one, most people. Right, bring yeah. their own guitar. Yeah. So yeah. that's pretty interesting. Now, you're a member of the Nashville... Nashville Songwriters right. Association International. Okay. NSAI. And the workshop up here, uh, the coordinator is Ann Freeman, who's right. sitting right down there. That's See, right. that's her. Hey, Ann. Uh, and... Uh, She's the one that uh, asked me to come up here and do this seminar thing. And uh, I've done them in uh, other cities before. This is the first time I've done one in New Jersey. And, uh, it was a huge success, wasn't it? Oh, it was. Uh, yeah, it was fun. <laughs> yeah. Sure. And I, and I made this video called Guitar Playing for Songwriters, okay. which focuses on chords and, and rhythms as opposed to single note playing and, and sure. getting a whole lot into scales and modes and Things now, like when, you, when you're in Nashville, you teach a Sherry Austin or a Pam Tillis the same similar skills that you taught here in New Jersey. Right. Okay. Uh, and, of course, Pam, is uh, she's been playing a pretty good while, and, and so a lot of lessons that I did with her were about, she said, well, one day, uh, okay, I want to learn how to play slide guitar. And so we, and what's slide guitar mean? Well, uh, I don't have a... A slide oh, with me, okay. but it's like you have a, a little tube, metal or glass tube, and you put it on your finger, huh. and you slide it up and down, and uh, I wish I had one. I okay, could, that's all I right. I could show you, but uh, that's what uh, Bonnie Raitt does, and that's how you play a uh, dobro or steel guitar with a, wow. with a slide. Okay. Thing. And how, how many different styles of guitar picking are there in this? Mm. A lot. We're talking are there all uh, all around or in in what I teach well, or uh, what do you teach what you're familiar with well um I basically cover pop and rock and roll blues yeah. and country and that's all different yeah there are different elements in in everything wow usually like like jazz will be more complex harmonically like like chords that are more difficult or not necessarily more difficult but they're unusual outside of that. Can you demonstrate the difference between a jazz and a classical and a country mm -hmm. chords? Well, like for instance, uh, a jazz thing might sound something like... Okay. Go, you know, go, like. go uh, classical. Okay, that would be more like... Usually played with your fingers, like this isn't a classical piece, but it sounds like one. Okay. That kind of thing. And uh, then, uh, let's see, country, there's a lot of different kinds of country. For instance, something that would be on the radio now, a modern kind of a thing, would be something like... That comes out of the rock and roll field, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, uh -huh. that would be like a lot of Brooks and Dunn stuff or somebody like that. And then there's a traditional country. The Chet Atkins style? Yeah, that would be Chet Atkins stuff, which is similar to what I was... What's, is there such a thing as called flat picking? Yeah, that's just when you use a, a plain pick like this. Okay. And, and so you're picking a lot of single notes. Okay. Like bluegrass, there's a lot of flat picking in, in bluegrass music. Okay. You're a session man. You played back up to a lot of uh, Nashville entertainers mm -hmm. since being in Nashville for the last have X number of years. About 20. 20 years. So you met a lot of them. You've worked mm -hmm. with a lot of them. Um, what's it mean to be a session man? I'm sure you know a lot of people would like to know what a session musician definition of it is. Well, usually you just go in the studio and you have... Uh, four or five guys, the rhythm section, uh, like a piano and drums and maybe electric guitar, acoustic guitar, and a bass player. And uh, you just, you learn the song usually by the number system and somebody will bring in a chart that just has a bunch of numbers on it that represent chords. Uh, 
and then you run the song down once or twice, and then you then you record it, and not ne you don't necessarily have the singer there I, at the same time. Read them lips. I was just going to say, uh -huh. a lot of times you just, the track is is cut before the artist comes in. Right. The sound is cut. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Yeah. Uh, in fact, it's done so many different ways now that you can't really say it's always done one way or the other. But, but I prefer having everybody there at the same time because you get more of a, a feeling. It pulls together it. quicker. Right. But, but now, the way technology is, sometimes you can have, uh, they'll just go in and do drum tracks for a week or something like that, which I don't like. And uh, matter of fact, Alan Reynolds, who produces uh, Garth Brooks, he doesn't like that either. And most of Garth Brooks's tunes are sung with him in the studio with the band as they learn the song because the energy and the freshness is still there. Have you gone out on the road with any of these artists? Um, yeah, I've been out on the road with uh, Pam Tillis and uh, Brenda Lee and Bobby Bear and uh, Porter Wagner and uh, Johnny Lee. And you played the I road shows. The road Shelley shows. West, yeah, a whole yeah. lot. And I've recorded in the studio uh, with Willie and Waylon and Tammy Wynette and Billy Joe Royal and my old band, The Box Tops. Yeah. And um, some more people I forget. A lot of a lot of R and B artists too from Memphis because that's where I'm okay. from. Okay. Right. Huh. Now that and when you go, let me think for a second. Tell tell us a story about Waylon or Willie. They're they're always good old boys. Okay. Uh, on the WW2 album. Yeah, I have it. Which was, I guess, it recorded about 82, shortly after I right. got to Nashville anyway. The producer, Chips Moman, who owned the studio where we cut the letter and all the box tops hits back in Memphis. And so uh, I was doing recording sessions for him, playing guitar and singing backup on some things. And uh, so uh, I was playing one of Waylon's acoustic guitars, this real pretty black custom made guitar. Yeah. And, uh, sitting on the couch outside the, the control room, kind yeah. of in the lobby lounge area of the lounge area, yeah. And and so Waylon comes out, they're, they're messing with so this song, and I think it's uh, that old song, Birds of a Feather, or something like that, that, that B.J. Thomas did or somebody. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so Waylon comes out there, and he calls everybody Hoss. And I'm sitting on the couch, and he's standing there. He goes, Hoss, I think we're going to let you put a guitar on this on this track. and and then I said, yeah, okay. And he said, but, but one thing, if you play better than me, I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> That's wailing for you. Yeah. Huh? So yeah. I just decided to go home at that point. That was it, huh? No. I, no, you played on his guitar. Yeah. Played but, on. Yeah, he's, he's a funny guy. You were telling me yesterday while we were doing a radio show, you sang uh, back up to Willie on Always On My Mind. Mm-hmm. You can, you can hear my voice on there pretty, pretty, pretty clear, well. Huh? Yeah. I'm singing a note. Actually, I'm singing notes higher than I can really sing, so... Sounds kind of like the chipmunks, but uh, that's me. If you that's hear like that. Alvin or Theodore, or yeah, that's you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's Gary, huh? Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Tell us a story about old Chris, one of the highwaymen. That oh. was a cool. That was a cute story. Yeah, I'm not sure the exact words he used, but they're always kidding Chris Christopherson about his singing voice, you yeah. know, because he doesn't have a real good singing voice. I mean. You know, none of them are great singers, but they all have their own kind of right. style. And so Johnny Cash and, uh, and Willie and Waylon and Chris were the highwaymen. So sure. one day, uh, Chris Christopherson comes in, and he goes something, oh, my throat's kind of killing me. I don't know. I don't think I can sing very well today, you know. And then Willie said, well, Chris, how can you tell? <laughs> That's all. You know. I guess he couldn't sing very well. He got well, him, huh? yeah. Yeah, he got him. He got him good. Yeah. All right. Let's go back to an instructional video that you okay. have out. What what else is on that video now? Well, uh, that we didn't sh we, that we didn't pick up on the before. Uh, it it shows a lot about chord progressions. Like most people, when they learn how to play guitar, say they'll learn five or six chords, and they really won't know where to go from there. Okay. And so this just kind of takes you from whatever level you're on, and and adds the things that are logically next in in the order that you need to learn them so that you don't have any uh gaps in in your your knowledge of how to play chords or rhythms or anything because what happens is people will learn from a relative or a friend sure. or whatever porch picking 
Yeah, and then right, there's right. some very, very basic things that they don't know. They might even know some pretty complicated things, but there's yeah. big gaps, like they like they missed the second and third grade, you know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, they, they graduated, but... And, and so what I do is just try to fill in all the gaps, okay. and even uh, people like, like my father who played uh, guitar, and still does play guitar, um, it's a good thing for him, too, because he's one of those people who who learned on his own pretty much and there's a lot of basic things he doesn't know um, so it just kind of fills in the gaps and takes you to another hmm. level interesting now the majority of your students are geared toward country or does it matter where now you're in Nashville so I presume most of the students are geared toward country if you teach in Los Angeles or you gearing, you can go. You can teach for anything now, according to what we just, you know. Yeah, the the basics are still the same. Are they? And now, if I where, went, what grade, what grade of education, as you used the first grade to fifth grade, does it, did the basics change for jazz, well, country and classical? I would say if you, for all popular music, like you could say, uh, blues, alternative rock, country, uh, pop, whatever. All that is pretty much basically, I would say, that's what you learn in high school, Okay. for instance. And then maybe if you get into jazz and, and classical, it's just a little, it's harder, it's more complex. Okay. And you have to learn a little bit more. So I would say, you know, that's more like the high school. something like, uh, you know, calculus as compared to arithmetic or something. Show us a college court. If we want to go, if we want to, <laughs> use, a, if we want to use a school analogy here. Okay. What's, a, what's an elementary court? Well, an elementary chord would be something like a G chord. It's usually the first chord people learn how okay. to play. It's just a plain old chord. What's high school now? Now, uh, I, I'd say, okay, if you made a... That's called a G add nine chord. And it's just, you're adding one note to a, to okay. a G chord. Now, something like, um, that would be considered uh, a jazzier kind of chord would be, say... Uh, a G major seven, something like that, okay. um, and then you can get into chords like thirteen. That's a D thirteen chord. I have no idea. Now the simple chord is a D seven, but one of the ways to play it that's more fancy is a D thirteen, and you wouldn't hear a song, a chord like that so much in country or blues okay. or. Where is it heard? Rock and roll. Well, it could be heard in in rock and roll, but more likely in a jazz kind okay. of a thing, or in an uptown kind of blues that okay. leans toward jazz. Show us a, a college chord. <laughs> okay. Uh, Using the school analogy, of course. Okay, the, like chords like this. Those have names like 11s and, and minor 7s with flat 5s and things like that. Those are a little more complex, but they, they have the same function as the basic chords do. They just sound more um, jazzy, usually, is the way people describe them. And, and classical is, is um, more of a solo playing technique. I mean, you don't have many classical guitar pieces where the guitar is part of a symphony. It's usually just solo playing, whether it, and jazz is mostly group, you know, group yeah, playing. Right ensembles and trios let me and ask you a question i was just thinking as we were talking i when i go to a country music concert they change guitars for every song mm -hmm. why because they can they, no. okay basically and what's the difference between sometimes the guitars? Uh, sometimes there isn't any they just do it because oh, it's fun okay yeah, <laughs> there's always use. a guy running out putting a guitar in a stand well a lot of times they'll have a guitar that's tuned differently okay uh so they can play like if you play like a slide stuff, like a, on, or a dobro, okay. that's a different tuning than regular standard guitar tuning. So they might want to play slide or something on, on one song, and so they'll change guitars, because it takes a whole lot of time to retune your guitar, so it's better to have a, a spare there so you can, can swap them. Or they'll go from electric to acoustic, okay. or 12 string to okay. a six string, or... I see that a lot. Mm -hmm. What's your website? It's www.garytally.com. Okay, and they can find more information about you on that website. They can, and they can find out about 
the, the people 4, I'm playing for. The 4,953rd, yeah. uh, what is it? Uh, something, somewhere Some, in there. Somewhere in there, I'm one of the man show business. Okay. top 5,000. <laughs> five, yeah, I'm yeah, one okay. of the top 5,000. But, right. but I want people that are in this area and they're interested in songwriting, they need to get a hold of Ann Freeman okay. at PrincetonSongwriters.com. Okay, that's good. And then you come back to New Jersey and teach some more? Sure, I'd love to. Okay. Come back and do the show again. Join me on the radio again. Yeah. Good. Looking forward to it. Me too. 